Hi, and welcome to the Farmer Brad Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about why I raise pastured poultry. I'd first like to define what pasture poultry is by the American Pasture Poultry Producers Association. They say that pasture poultry embodies a few key tenets of production. The birds live in a significant portion of their lives outside on vegetated pasture. The birds are rotated to fresh vegetation often in a managed way. Flocks are housed in a lower stock densities to ensure the birds can express their natural behaviors without stress and injury to themselves or the other birds. In addition to the forage offered via pasture, the birds eat a nutritiously balanced feed that is appropriate for the species and age of the flock. Slaughter is typically done in a small scale or exempt facility by hand in a way that respects the life of the animal. I've been raising meat birds, uh, just finished up my third year this year, and the first year I raised 100 birds, the second year I raised 300, and this last year I raised just a little over 400 birds. And each year I've learned something new. Um, The first chicken tractor that I built, which is A chicken tractor is a movable chicken coop that helps you to be able to uh, move the chickens in a specific way on the pasture. It also helps with uh, manure distribution so that your pasture doesn't get too much manure in one area and not enough in the other. So... One way that I accomplished that was I built a John Siskovich chicken tractor, which I have his book on my website, farmerbrad.com forward slash John, J-O-H-N, will take you straight to his book where he shows you how to make a chicken tractor that he has learned over the years what he needed in a chicken tractor, and it's one that will last a long time. It's roughly five feet wide by eight feet long, and you're actually able to stand up in it. And there is a feed trough in the middle that is suspended. And then at the end of it is where you put your water. That chicken tractor can hold between 20 and 25 Cornish cross meat birds. Now, part of that is you want to make sure that you give each bird between one and a half to two square feet per bird. Or otherwise, you'll just be like the factory farms and have it be high density farming, which is what you're wanting to avoid. So you have the chickens out on pasture and they are starting to get a hang of the chicken tractor moves. So every day or every other day you move the chicken tractors. It's basically about how much manure load they put on that area. So when they're smaller, the chicken tractor doesn't have to be moved as much, but as they get bigger, then it's an every day or even sometimes two times a day where you have to move them. Um, so the chickens are able to scratch, have access to bugs, as well as the non-GMO feed that I feed them. Um, but it ends up being a better life for the chickens and they're able to get a more rich diet 
with having that grass. And I've had customers that say, you know, the chicken that I purchased from you at the farmer's market brought me back to my grandma's chicken. The chicken that she raised where she would just go out into her backyard and get the hen or rooster that was going to be dinner that night. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so great to raise pasture chicken because I'm able to bring people back to a time when chicken was chicken instead of all of these factory farms that say, you know, we have cage free chicken, we have free range chicken. But a lot of times in these situations, the chickens are not able to see the day of light or have access to grass. So this is a better way of raising chickens to only give the chicken one bad day. And that is the day that they're processed. And I feel as I raise these birds, I need to tell their story at the farmer's market so that people can experience it for themselves. Um, I feel like I'm starting to get a customer base that appreciates pasture poultry. Now, eventually, I'd like to work into heritage breed meat birds. Um, but at this time, at, since I'm starting out, I'm doing the Cornish cross because it's a nice mix between fast growing and they put uh, a decent amount of weight on the birds in that short amount of time. The other thing I wanted to mention about Cornish cross breed is that it's a breed that you have to get from the hatcheries because the breeding is a little complicated that you're not able to typically just raise Cornish cross yourself um, or breed Cornish cross yourself. But I do get my Cornish cross from Cackle Hatchery out of Lebanon, Missouri. Now, the reason why I like Cackle Hatchery's meat birds is that so far I've had none dead on arrival because they get shipped via the post office and show up on your doorstep or you pick them up at the post office when they arrive. And the ones from Cackle Hatchery may not get the largest, but I feel like that they are the healthiest Cornish cross that I've raised. Uh, when I'm out there pulling the chicken tractors and then I lift, open up the tops for the new style of chicken tractors that I've been using, I will see Cornish cross roosting. Uh, they'll perch up on the top of the chicken tractor and be looking at me and uh it's just a great experience raising those birds each year i've learned something new the first year it was just getting my feet wet with raising broilers for pasture second year i ended up making a 10 foot by 20 foot large chicken tractor but I had to move it with my Kubota tractor and I didn't like the idea of having to fire that up in order to do a move each day. I also explored with that chicken tractor of raising birds with uh, electric poultry netting and some guard geese in order to help with that. And then this last year, I came across the Peterson chicken tractor, which is an eight foot by eight foot chicken tractor made out of two by threes that is fairly easy to pull. And then it has a tarp roof that when pulled tight ends up shedding the water away. And it's really easy to gain access to the birds. I just lift up one side. I could step in there and, and 